Welcome to the Old Tom Radio Superman Show. This is your host, Adam Graham. And the answer to the question of what a hundred thousand dollars equates to uh, 1940 dollars, what that means today, in effect, what the Invisible Man is asking District Attorney Parker for as a bribe in order to get the Daily Planet to stop uh, from covering uh, his corruption is 1.5 million dollars in today's money. That that is the answer of the day. Of course, the Invisible Man in this story. Uh, generally gave away the big advantage of being invisible by uh, co- by speaking audibly in the office. There's so much more fun stuff you can do with being invisible. But basically, he's in the office, and we're going to find out what exactly he wants in just a moment. But uh, before we before we do get started, I do want to encourage you to check out our store at lulu.com slash laser sword also please uh, sign up as a be one of our facebook friends uh on and we actually got a very nice comment from david on facebook uh david writes hi adam superman rocks love the podcast well thanks a lot uh we also have a couple comments to get to on our podcast alley and again i encourage everybody to please uh cast their vote for us once a month at podcast alley uh, it does help the show uh, continue to grow and expand its reach. Comment here from Stacy Adams. This is a great podcast. I especially love Adams' commentary before and after the episode. You can tell he's a real fan, and he's done his homework with the historical research. That's from Stacy Adams. Famous brand of men's shoes, Stacy Adams, if that's the case. Uh, please email me and... Well, okay. I guess I won't get free shoes out of this, but... Uh, <laughs> And I know, probably not the same Stacey Adams anyway. Okay. Um, uh, other comment from uh, DN, a, a uh, small talk. I don't know exactly why I enjoy this serial, but I do. The writing is so dated and simple. With plot holes, one could drive a powerful uh, locomotive through. And acting that is often cheesy at best. However, the nostalgia of it, of it all and the joy of watching the genesis of the world's first real superhero and he and his surroundings mythos are created, modified, and clarified is fascinating. Adam Graham is a fan and as such, he's a good person to introduce the show. So I also appreciate that he isn't above chuckling at the weak plots and making g- gentle fun at the artificially dramatic endings of each episode. Thanks for making these available, Adam. Well, thank you very much. And I'm glad the humor is appreciated. It's... Uh, you you, you want to be sure not to go too far, because this is still Superman we're talking about, even if it's a, a little bit more cheesy Superman than most of us are used to. Uh, and so you want to show proper respect, but some of this stuff you've got to la- you you just got to laugh at uh, because it's it's just it's just fascinating by today's standards. But without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into the Invisible Man Part Two. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman. It's a plane! It's Superman! And now, Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with physical powers far beyond those of mortal men, and who fights a never-ending battle against crime and oppression disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper. As you remember, Clark Kent had been assigned to write a series of articles in collaboration with Lois Lane to expose the crooked district attorney Parker. Ralph Remsen, former assistant to the DA, who had resigned in protest against Parker's message, had volunteered to supply the facts for the Daily Planet campaign to oust Parker from office. As our story opens today, Kent, Lois, editor Perry White, and Ralph Remsen are discussing their campaign in the editor's office. Listen. Don't forget about that. That bit about the fixed jury man, Mr. Kent. Okay, Mr. Remsen. Uh, Lois, we mustn't forget we've got a dinner and tea today tonight. The quicker we get started in this article, the better. Quite so. What? What the... And when you finish writing it, Miss Lane, Mr. Kent, what? take a suggestion from me and tear it up. Well, what under oh, no. Who said that? Didn't somebody you say... You all heard a strange voice in this room, or I'm quietly going crazy. No, you did hear a strange voice. Who said that? I did, Mr. Kent. Well, who are you? Where are you? I'm standing behind Editor White's chair. Oh, oh, great Scott. As to who I am, gentlemen, Miss Lane, prepare to do business with the Invisible Man. It's a dream. That's what it is. Now, listen, you people. We, we're dreaming. Aren't we? 
Hardly a dream, Mr. White, but I... If you ask I... me, it's... I think it's just a trick. Commendably clever, Mr. Kent. It is a trick. But I doubt whether you can tell how it is done. Well, this is... Well, it's positively mystifying. I imagine that's what it's intended to be. Well, all right, whoever you are, you're playing a trick on us. Now, you might unburden yourself and tell us why you're playing the trick. I like you for that, Mr. Kent. You've come to the point quickly. Very well, I will tell you why. Gentlemen, Miss Lane, you are about to inaugurate a campaign against District Attorney Parker. Am I right? Well? I have come to say, don't do it. Oh? And exactly why shouldn't we do it? Because if you do, I shall take steps to see that you regret it. Come on, come on, Just a minute, Lois. Let's get to the bottom of this. Are you... Are you working for Parker? Has he hired you to come here and try to intimidate us? That's beside the point, Mr. Kent. What really matters is this. I have warned you not to publish even one article against District Attorney Parker. If you are a man of sense, you will heed that warning. Now listen, never mind all this. Here's a man who can make himself invisible. There's a story for you. Invisible man in Babe's editor's office. Weird, supernatural or Wait a minute, Chief. There's nothing weird or supernatural about this. It's a trick. A trick and nothing more. Why, Kent is right. It is a trick. An attempt to get our minds off Parker for a while. <laughs> Gentlemen, please, you underestimate me. I merely make myself invisible to hide my identity, nothing more. Because, you see, I really have the power to back up any warning, any threat I make. Yes, Mr. Kent, I am working for District Attorney Parker. I have guaranteed that these stories of yours will not appear in print. I intend to see that guarantee is kept. And how do you propose to do that? I don't make a practice, Mr. Kent, of exposing my hand before I play it. You must merely accept my word for it that should you publish even the first story... If you try to print that story tonight, you will regret it more than you have ever regretted anything in your life. That's all I have to say. Kent, he sounds as if he means it. He certainly does. Clark, what do you think? All I can say is, threats or no threats, invisible man or not, we ought to go ahead with that story. What do you say, Chief? I agree with you 100%, Kent. I knew you would. Well, did you hear that, Mr. Invisible? I say, did you hear our answer to your warning? He doesn't have to. Why, he, he's gone. He went just as silently and mysteriously as he came. Oh, this will make a whale of a story. Now, look here, Kent. Let Lois write the story on District Attorney Parker. You sit down and be out a column or two on this invisible man yarn. I wouldn't do that, Chief. Well, why not? Because I think if you give this thing time, if you let it develop by itself, you'll really have a story. You'll have a story that'll make this town stand on its ear. A story that'll have everybody talking for weeks to come. What do you mean? What are you getting at? Well, don't ask me to explain, Chief. Just... Wait and see. Well, Lois, we'd better get started in that article. We've got a dinner date together at Victorio's at 7 o'clock. Oh, goodness, Clark, I'd almost forgotten. All of this invisible man business and everything. Well, should we work in your office or mine? Oh, mine will do. Come on, let's go. Uh, but Kent, uh, wait a minute. What? This invisible man. If I only knew the answer to, to how he does it. When we learn that, then we will have something. <laughs> Oh, waiter. Uh, yes, Mr. King. Waiter, I ordered dinner here tonight for two. I see set places for three. Well, those were the orders I received from the captain, sir. Okay. Mr. Kent's table said three places. That's funny. Clark, well, are you sure you didn't make a mistake? Of course not, Lois. <laughs> but this is rather awkward, sir. I have three servings here on this tray, and... It's quite all right, waiter. But, uh, you may serve the three others. Oh, what? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Kent. I, I thought I, I heard... Know. I know what you've heard. Uh, never, never mind clearing that up now. I'll let you know when I want dinner, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. It's all right. Really, the most amazing thing. So you even intrude at the dinner table, do you? Oh, so sorry. Really, Kent. And of course, Miss Lane. Please do forgive me. But you see, I... I have your welfare so at heart. I'm so anxious that no harm should come Clark, to... Clark, let's get out of Take here. Take it easy, Lois. Don't let our invisible friend get on your nerves. Now, look here. This has gone far enough. So? Under ordinary circumstances, I'd be amused by this trick of yours, whatever it may be. But right now, it happens that Miss Lane and I would like to eat our dinner in peace. So, if you don't mind... No, but I do. Believe me, I regret the intrusion as much as you. But it's really most important that you listen to me. I'm not interested. I gave you warning this afternoon. You didn't pay any attention to it. You went right ahead and wrote that article exposing District Attorney Parker as a crook. As a man who's used his office criminally. Now, honestly, I... 
I have a certain regard for you two. I don't want to see anything happen to you. Indebted, I'm sure. But something will happen if you persist in taking this thing lightly. Now, please, reconsider. Won't you call Editor White and convince him that the best thing to do is to forget this entire campaign against Parker? If you think I'd do that, especially after insisting that White go ahead with the campaign, you're crazy. You don't realize what you're letting yourself in for. Listen to me, Kent. I meant every word I said this afternoon. I warned you that if you insisted on carrying through this campaign against Parker, that you'd regret it. You will regret it, Kent. Believe me, you will. You can't frighten us. All right. I'm afraid neither Miss Lane nor myself is impressed. What exactly do you think you can do to us? Did you hear me? Yes. Huh. He seems to have left us again. Look, look, I can't help it. This, this sort of thing gets me down. No, well, it's nothing but a trick. And once we find the solution to it, there's no doubt it'll turn out to be pretty simple. Yes, but, but to make himself invisible. Now, now, not another word about it. We're supposed to forget business tonight and enjoy ourselves. And that's exactly what we're going to do. <laughs> character during the last part of that. Oh, 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 Thank you. Here you are. Thank you, sir. What are you thinking of happening? I don't know, Lois. Whatever it is, we'll soon find out. I don't know, Remsen. We'll see what Kent has to say when he gets here. If he ever does. But you can't kill that story now, Mr. White. You owe something to the public, to the people who have bought your paper year in and year out. You can't let anything stand in the way of exposing Parker for what he is. Well, you saw the note the Invisible Man sent me, Ransom. I can't afford to take chances. Well, all I can say... Oh, here come Kent and Lois Lane now. Oh, Chief. Well, what's the trouble? Well, whatever it is, it better be important. We missed the third act of the play to come here. You will find it important, all right. Here, uh, have a look at this, Kent. Huh? Oh, no, then. Yeah, from the Invisible Man. Oh, what's it say, Kent? Let's see. My last warning... Start your presses tonight and you won't print another story for weeks to come. Huh. I wonder what he means by that. I don't know exactly what he means, Kent, but I do know this. I'm worried. If he can make good this threat of his, if he can actually prevent us from putting another edition on the street for weeks, well, then I'm scared and scared plenty. If we miss one edition, just one edition, Kent, well, you know what it means to us financially. We can't afford to take chances. I know what it means, all right. Got your presses tonight, and you won't print another edition for weeks to come, eh? Hm. I have a mind to find out exactly what the Invisible Man can do. Just how important his threats and warnings are. Well, what do you mean, Kent? I mean, I wouldn't let him bulldoze me, Chief. We've started this campaign against District Attorney Parker and his crooked regime. Well, let's go through with it. I say whatever happens, start printing that story for the morning edition. I say get those presses started. He's right, Mr. White. If we miss this chance to put Parker where he belongs, we'll never get another one. Cost definitely right. Let's start those presses. Yeah, but the warning. Never mind the warning, sir. Let's start the presses and see what happens. All right. We'll do it. Well, Joe. Yes, sir. Start your presses for the morning edition. Right, sir. Start the press. Start the press. Start the press. Will the Invisible Man make good his threat? And what will happen? And what trick does the Invisible Man use to make himself invisible? Do you know? Well, be sure to listen to the next exciting and baffling episode of this story with Superman. And remember, tune in the next thrilling installment of the transcription feature, Superman! Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. Welcome back. Uh, apparently, what was offered by the Invisible Man 
is that in exchange for getting the 100000 from District Attorney Parker, he was going to talk Lois and Clark to death. Um, this is, you know, this this is the most bizarre, invisible man I've ever seen or not seen, as the case might be. Um with just making a lot of or else threats. And that's been the whole episode. So hopefully we get into some action and we get to see or not see what the Invisible Man will do. Um, but I do want to thank... I do want to thank everyone so much for listening. Please feel free to send me an email, adam at adamsweb.us. For now, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.